Welcome to The Guide. It's what you should know for where you want to go, what you didn't know for where you are, and what you can prevent from what you could learn. So why not learn from each other, together, here on The Guide. My name is Shawa. I'm a singer, songwriter, artist, and worshiper, and I have a brand called Worship Culture. My passion for music started at a really young age. Uh, my family loves music. My dad is a music lover. Um, you know, I grew up listening to all types of music from Anita Baker to Whitney Houston to Stevie Wonder, Sunny Ade, all these artists. So um, I grew a passion for music at a very, very young age. And in all of that, I was always drawn to worship music. And so I created a playlist. I remember um, you know, putting a playlist together of all my favorite worship songs. And that's just kind of how it transitioned from um, loving music to actually being an artist. You give more than enough. All we want, no Holy Ghost, is an open heaven. Oh, Holy Ghost, open heaven. You renew the broken part of us. You restore, you give more than enough, all we want, no Holy Ghost. So talk to us about your childhood and basically who were you before you became the artist that you are today? Um, I was nerdy and shy and introverted. Um, I grew up with a family of five brothers. So I was a tomboy, you know, sneakers all the time, you know. Um, very reserved. I had very few friends. Um, just super, super introverted. Didn't really have anything going on for me, to be honest. I was mm -hmm. very timid. Mm -hmm. I couldn't talk in front of people. Just the typical shy kid. Yeah. Um, but I always grew up around music. You know, my dad loves, loves music. And so that was my entire identity. Just music lover, shy, science loving kid. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So your dad, like you guys, was the music something that he like brought up to you guys or something that you guys just culturally, or is it something that you also found an interest of later on? Um, so when MP3 players were still like- MP3, oh my God. MP3 <laughs> players, when they were still like very, very recent, like yeah. he had a thick MP3 player that took like 10,000 songs. I don't mm -hmm. know where this guy found it, um, but he had so many songs on there. He had like, Sunny Ade, which is a Nigerian artist. Um, <laughs> he had um, Anita Baker, Tony Braxton, Luther Vandross, Stevie Wonder. So mm -hmm. like, I don't really think I had an option to love mm -hmm. music. He just kind of forced it, was it there. on me. It was yeah. always playing at some point in the house. So yeah, yeah, that's how like my music how loving. You self. got introduced. Yeah, music, exactly, basically. exactly. So when was the point when you actually knew that you were meant to pursue music? Mm -hmm. um, and not only that, when did you know that, you know, like worshiping and being a worshiper was supposed to be what you're what you were called to do? Basically. Oh, right, right. Um, OK, so for me, worship was a hobby. Like mm. it wasn't a calling at first. Right. Mm. So I told you I love music. So I remember creating like a worship playlist. Mm. I would find, you know, artists like um, what's his name? Ty Tribbett mm. and Mali Music and all these guys and put it in a playlist. Mm. So it was a hobby. I remember we moved to a different city. It was Scarborough at the time. Wow. Yeah. Scars. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Scarborough. Oh, Scarborough. I mean, we didn't move to Scarborough. The church was in Scarborough. We mm. were in Whitby, which is completely different, but we're in Whitby, but the church was in Scarborough. Mm. And um, I joined the worship team there and, you know, I'm like, you know what? This is a hobby of mine. I'm not going to be an usher. I'm not going to be anything else. Yeah. So let me just let me just start in the music that. industry. Yeah. So I served there, but it didn't feel like a calling. It just felt like a hobby, something mm. that I enjoyed. But what I realized at that point was like people would say things like, oh, that touched me and mm. that changed my life. And I'm like, whoa, mm. I'm chill. It's not that serious. I'm just singing type thing. Yeah. 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 But it became more solid when I moved to Ottawa when it's like, okay, I was around a lot of worshipers and I mm. started learning what worship meant. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think it came all at once. I think it was a gradual step of discovery. It was a journey. Yeah, exactly. exactly. What does your journey look like specifically? Like moving from Scarborough would be all the 
the way to Ottawa, still pursuing this thing. Yeah. What does that journey look like for you? I think it was interesting, very up and down, very, um, I think I was unsure of my identity at certain points mm. in that journey. I wasn't, cause um, I didn't mention this, but I, I was pursuing medicine wow. in, um, uh, what's the school called again? Um, <laughs> Waterloo University. Yeah. I was in med, um, biomed for three years in Waterloo. And for so long, that was my identity, mm. right? Like that's what I knew, that's what I understood. Your comfort zone. Yeah, that was my comfort yeah. zone. Like yeah. this is what I'm called to do, I'm gonna be a doctor. And now that I think about it, I think I would have made a terrible doctor because mm. I wasn't passionate about it. It was just kind of yeah. like, you know, you're either a lawyer or mm -hmm. an engineer or a doctor type mm -hmm. thing, right? And so, yeah, that was um, the initial uh, process for me. And then transitioning to like, what am I really doing on this earth? Like, what's mm. my purpose? If it's not medicine, what is it? It was quite difficult, but I'm thankful that I was surrounded by uh, people, mentors, people who spoke life into me and showed me like, okay, this is what you're called to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you actually came to Ottawa, what did it look like when you started to exercise, you know, your gifting? Because this is a whole different city that you're walking yeah, into. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so what did that look like? Whew. Um, I think it was difficult. I think I had a lot of, now that I think about it, I had a lot of identity issues. Mm. Um, if you think about the gospel music genre and like Christian music as, as a whole, um, if you listen to artists like Tasha Cobbs and like, you know, artists that are out there, black mm -hmm. artists, mm -hmm. um, you hear them, or worshipers, I mean, you hear them with power behind their voice, mm -hmm. right? Like very mm -hmm. strong and, and I'm really soft-spoken, you know that about mm -hmm. me. I'm yeah. very soft-spoken yeah. <laughs> and even in singing, I'm very, very soft-spoken. Yeah. So I was like struggling a little bit, like God, why would you give me a gift that's so soft? Mm. Like I want something more like powerful. And if you go yeah. back to my old videos, I have some like crazy yelling, like I just <laughs> yelled. Because <laughs> I thought, you know, that's, that's how, where the power was. What, yeah. Exactly, power was, you know, yeah. yelling. But now I had to realize like power was in my softness. God anointed my softness. He gave me that gift as a soft singer and I didn't have to change who I was. So you were busy comparing yourself. Exactly. Meanwhile, you were supposed to just be Sing you. Exactly. 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 Um, on your journey to being you and all these things, you started to write a lot more. Yeah. You actually released one of your songs yeah. last year called Run In. Yes. I need to know the insights about this song. There's a real hunger in my heart to know you more than yesterday. Um, so if you know me, I write a lot of slow songs, mm -hmm. a lot of um, what people would call like the typical worship song. Right? Yeah. Um, and so running was completely out of my comfort zone. Um, but I, the songs I listen to are more upbeat and fast. Yeah, yeah. But the yeah. songs I typically write are slower. So mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what? Let me just write, like allow myself to write how mm -hmm. I feel. Mm -hmm. And so I started writing this song called Running. Um, it's a song about intimacy, mm -hmm. um, very upbeat. And I, I remember messaging AP, shout out to mm -hmm. AP. Um, and I'm like, I have this song, like it's kind of like a pop sound. Can you mm -hmm. help me with it? And we created magic, honestly. I think it was magic. I it was know. magic. <laughs> yeah. I think the thing that I the thing that I love so much about this song yeah. is that you made a video with it, yeah. but it was so unexpected like yeah. the creativity in this video was something different i wasn't expecting that yeah. i thought you were just gonna be like you know just you maybe <laughs> in front of a tree or something you know typical <laughs> basic song yeah but you actually went beyond like in your creativity can you talk to us about that like what is the story behind that i think music artistry is i think 50 percent about the message and like the songwriting and all of that the production and 50 percent creativity for me personally yeah. I love exploring like different things. I love visuals. I love styling. I yeah. want to see all the like busy yeah. stuff, right? So I, I, I teamed up with Tiffany the Creative, who is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And I had a vision. I remember I'm like, I want flowers on my head, Tiff. Like, make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> and she worked overnight and just put it together. I remember working with Annie, who mm -hmm. is super, super creative as well. And he, you know, did the whole video and we worked so hard. Hard. Mm. Chuka was there running in the, in the yeah. sun and like with spring water and oil on him. But I yeah. just really wanted it to be different. I wanted it to reflect God in a way that we hadn't seen before. Yeah. You understand? So like, yeah, yeah that was kind of like 
my vision for the, for the video. I love that about you. I felt like it was so different than yeah. any typical, you know, um, worship Christian type of song. Music yeah, video. Christian music. It was <laughs> right. so different. Right. Um, but not only that, you have been creative for more than just this song, more yeah. than just last year. And 2016, you actually wrote Yahweh, yes. which literally circulated the entire globe. Yeah. I need to know the backstory for this song. Um, okay, so fun fact, I wasn't ever a songwriter. I don't know if people would believe me, but I was never a songwriter. I think the first song I ever wrote was Just Like You. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know what? Everyone is writing around me. Let me just give it Write a, a shot. Song. Yeah. <laughs> just give it a shot and see how it goes. So I wrote Just Like You. And the second song I ever wrote was Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't even with a paper, a piece of paper or a pen. I mm -hmm. was literally washing dishes. That's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> just washing dishes, you know, just whatever, whatever. And then the song just started coming out of me. And I'm mm. like, what is this? So I recorded it on my laptop, mm. like a video. It's I wouldn't show anyone that because I looked <laughs> crazy. <laughs> but I recorded it on my laptop and I was just like singing and just kept coming out of me. And wow. I sent it to my team and they're like, this is amazing. And we mm -hmm. just recorded it in a classroom and yeah. Sing you Now it's all over the world and I'm just like, God, yeah. this is all for you. Did you ever imagine the song going that far? Not at all. A, yeah. Not at all. Fun fact, um, in the classroom, Yahweh wasn't even planned. Mm. Like we didn't plan to sing that. I remember going outside with Pastor Kofi at the time and just like running through the song, like, you know, let's just see how this works. Yeah. And we learned it together at like outside of the classroom and yeah. went into the classroom and just sang it together. Just sang it and it was crazy on the project and it's all over the world now. That's it's crazy. remarkable, yeah. I think it's crazy how nobody would expect a worship song of that deep yeah. to be birthed in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Literally minding your business in the kitchen. Just washing um, dishes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but the one thing about this song is that it's it's so, so, so deep. Yeah. Um, and if you actually take it in, it's hard to make me, it's hard to believe that there is not, there wasn't a specific season yeah. in your life that you were in yeah. for God to speak to you this way. So I want to know what was there, were you in a specific season where, you know, God was just talking to you? Because for a song to flow that way, that means yeah. that you were just, you know, God was just talking to you, yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, I think for me, um, I don't even know what period this was, but I had gone through a season of seeking God, like, like intimacy, like mm. actual intimacy with mm -hmm. God. I wasn't trying to write a hit song. I wasn't mm. trying to be an artist at the time. I wow. was just literally um, in a season of reverence, like God, you're everything I have. I, I remember specifically, I was struggling in school at this mm. point when I wrote it. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was literally a, in a season of brokenness for me. And so it's incredible to see what God can do in a season of brokenness, mm -hmm. yeah. I think that, you know, a lot of people like to shame brokenness and be like, oh my yeah. God, God, why are you doing this to me? But <laughs> this song has traveled so far. It has yeah. been sung by so many people. Yes. Even when we had, um, you know, YOF, yeah. I believe it was last year, yeah. um, it was sung by Chandler Moore. Yes, yes. And we had we had so many other people. Who are the people that were singing this um, song actually? Um, Matthew Stevenson's church, um, All Nations Worship Assembly, just released it actually on their project and it's Blessing amazing. People. I heard it. It's and amazing. It's, ama like, it's amazing. Yeah. I'm obsessed with it. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it's just incredible. I love hearing different versions of it because I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. I want to see how like a song that was birthed in the kitchen could turn into lives. this. Yeah. Like, 
Honestly, that honestly that's so great. But your creativity when it comes to you know worshiping, making music doesn't stop there. Yeah. So last year yeah. you started, or this year I should say, this you started year, January. Exactly, yeah. you started your podcast, Worship Culture. Yes. Now talk to us about that. Um, fun fact. I keep saying fun fact. <laughs> fun fact. Um, worship Culture um, was an idea I got at work. Mm. And I was in front of my computer, um, working hard, you know, <laughs> working hard at work. And God said to me, start a podcast. And I'm like, oh, that's mm. the devil. Like, that's yeah. not, <laughs> that's for sure not me. Because I don't like talking. I'm yeah. very reserved. I'm yeah. very, like, quiet. And I'm yeah. like, podcast, that's not for me. Yeah. Right? And um, he didn't actually tell me it was called Worship Culture. He just said start a podcast. And that's mm. something I find so interesting about God. Like, he doesn't give you all the details at once. Mm -hmm. It just waits for you to say yes and then gives you another. Yeah, gradually. Yeah, yeah, gradually. And so, yeah, I started the podcast after talking to my friends, um, my pastor, I'm like, you know what, I I'll just do it. So I started the podcast and it's all about, you know, worshiping outside of the four walls of mm -hmm. the church. I think um, what I grew up knowing was worship was just a song. You sing mm. a worship song for 15 minutes and that's it, but it's way beyond that. Yeah. And so worship culture is expressing worship in the different ways you mm -hmm. know through um creativity there's a, a podcast episode called um the worship and creative with yeah. tiffany the creative talking about how you could your posters your videos mm -hmm. could be a form of worship mm -hmm. so just basically like exploring the different forms of yeah. worship. yeah that worship is not really just in the music but yeah, it's, in it's everything that it's you do everything you do exactly it's what you're doing right now it's, gift, it's the gift that god gave yeah, you basically exactly. is what you're saying exactly. i think that that's so amazing um, and I love the fact that Worship Culture is not only a podcast, but you started your own clothing line. Yes. You dropped the second collection. Yes. The year isn't even over. You literally dropped the line this year, <laughs> dropped yeah. the second collection yeah. a, a few weeks ago. Yes, yes, yes. I need, I need to know, what, what is all of this? Um, as I said earlier, you know, it starts with one yes, and then it mm -hmm. just transitions from um, a podcast to a clothing line. Mm -hmm. I think it's like, either grade six or grade seven social studies that talks about culture and mm. culture is what you eat, culture is um, the language you speak and also how you dress. Yeah. So if I have a brand called Worship Culture, yeah. then clothing has to be an expression of it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And so um, our garments basically reflect an inward like um, posture. It's mm -hmm. what you're feeling on the inside that yeah. comes out of you yeah. and reflects in your clothing. And I love streetwear. I love yeah you know baggy tees and all of that and so worship culture brand as a whole the clothing line captures mm. streetwear luxury streetwear and all of that yeah. so yeah you that's know. so good and yeah the second collection you mentioned yeah. is for his identity mm -hmm. and um you know the revelation behind that was you know the three wise men i wish i could i should have worn the t-shirt so i could have showed <laughs> it but yeah uh, the three wise men um looked for jesus mm -hmm. um, and worshiped him mm with no, he hadn't done any miracles, he hadn't done anything. Yeah. And they actually literally worshiped him yeah. for his identity. And that's mm -hmm. why I put the collection out for his identity. That's so crazy, the way that you even branded it. I see yeah. that you kept the the whole, um, you know, nature feel. Yeah. yeah running, nature yeah. feel nature, in the I garden. Like nature. I just. I like it. Yeah. I like, I feel like nature, nature represents like life yeah. in general, blossoming, you know, growth, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and I honestly, I love that about you. I love that how, how creative you're being, even with your clothing. Yeah. It's hard for me to think that you don't have something else up your sleeve. Hi. Is there something that we should know <laughs> that I should, you know? Um, yeah, maybe I shouldn't share too much, but definitely more to, to come when it comes to the clothing. We're going to have a lot more collections. Mm -hmm. I'm working on one right now, which is, I can't say the name yet, but it's coming out really you soon. You just drop something. Like, you're, you're on I a roll. I just constantly you're work on, a on the next <laughs> thing, you know? Like, you have to be moving. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I think that's awesome. Um, I'm excited to see what else you're going to create. You have been on the go, go, go. Yeah. Um, where do you see yourself in five years from now? Like, show up. Oh. You yourself, the artistry, <laughs> the music, where does where is that gonna be in five years? In five years, wow, that's a long time. Um, for sure I want it to be I want my clothing, I want worship culture to be a brand mm. that's known worldwide. That's a dream of mine. And you know, for me, worship, as I said, isn't just a song. I think worship is when you fulfill purpose. Yep. And so 
if I'm able to fulfill purpose um, either through my music or through my podcast or through my my clothing line, mm -hmm. then that's fulfillment to me. So five years from now, honestly, maybe Justin Bieber could be wearing my t-shirt, you know? For sure. <laughs> I guess we get into existence. Into, into the atmosphere, yeah, you know, I'm hoping it, it explodes. I'm hoping uh, my music touches the end, ends of the earth um, mm. and blesses people, you know, and, you know, a few business things that I'm working on currently. But, yeah. You know, real estate, you know, all of that. For Just, sure. Yeah, for all, sure. all of that. Um, if there's any advice that you could give to somebody, you know, that might be watching this, that yeah. might be saying, you know, I want to get into this worship slash culture type yeah. of, you know, music. Yeah. Um, what can you say to somebody that wants to walk into, into your shoes, basically? Um, I'd say, one, be authentic. Mm. Um, I think God anoints your your authentic self mm -hmm. um don't try to be someone else mm. don't you can learn from people but don't um form your identity from people and mm -hmm. don't form your identity from what people say to you because mm. recently to be very transparent recently someone spoke to me and said to me like oh um Basically, what you're doing isn't in alignment with what God wants for you. Yeah. Who said? <laughs> Crazy oh stuff. Oh my God. <laughs> Crazy <laughs> stuff. You know, sometimes even the conversations you allow yeah. can affect you. Yeah. So, yeah, be careful of your circle. Be careful of um, who you're watching, who you're yeah. listening to. Mm -hmm. um, and get your validation from God. God mm. is who shapes your identity. Mm. Um, you're going to be discouraged. You're going to fall. Of you're going to um, feel like giving up. But always, always go back to God. To, to shape your identity. Wow. That's, that's my advice for them. Honestly, that's so amazing. I feel like that's applicable to anything that yeah. anyone wants to do, like not only in music, not only with God, but just in general. Yeah. I'm honestly excited for what else you have in store. I just pop on IG and it's like you're dropping, <laughs> you're dropping a new thing. So I'm excited for that. Yeah. And I honestly loved our conversation today, yeah. just getting to know you yes. as an artist, yeah. as an individual that you are making music, and you're doing great things. I'm just so excited. Thank you so much, Kiki. No problem. <laughs> um, but that is it for our interview today, and we will see you guys in our next interview. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Cal. Thank you so much for tuning in to The Guide. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos. You do not want to miss out.